Yo, what's going on? It's Brian from the Backspace Nomads. On today's game review, we're laying down track to build a railroad empire in the indie tycoon game Mashinki. By the end of this review, I hope to give you enough information so you can make a decision on whether or not you should buy or skip this game. If you dig this review and you want to give it a thumbs up, I appreciate it. If you like more of the content here on Backspace Nomads and you decide to subscribe to us, thank you. It really means a lot to us. I'm serious. This is Mashinki, and here's my review. Mashiki was released into Early Access October 6, 2017 onto the PC. You can pick it up on Steam for a cool $24.99. The game was developed and published by Jan Zellini. Mashiki was Jan's side hustle for like 7 years while he worked for some other big fancier game developers. 7 years of work on the development of one thing is so goddamn impressive and has such dedication, you can almost feel his love for this game spilling out into the game world. How does Jan Zellini describe his game? Mashinki is a transport strategy game about trains. The goal is to create your own transport empire on a procedurally generated map. It's a unique blend of realistic graphics combined with the isometric construction mode and board game like rules." End quote. And that's fairly straightforward. And in a way, I almost feel like it's selling the game just a little bit short of what's actually inside of it. You start Mashinki in a procedurally generated map and real quick, does anyone else just get this like tingly value feeling when the word procedurally just shows up in the description. No, is that just me? Uh, uh, Alright, anyways, you start on this unique map with towns and coal mines and forests, everything sprawled out, nothing connected to each other, just hanging out there by themselves that, without any locomotion. And being a savvy entrepreneur, you begin to connect these resource nodes and towns together in an increasingly complicated web of rails that are teetering on the verge of collapse, held together by suspicious timing and railroad signals. Hopefully the game is set up for you in your mind because we're going into our first category, graphics. Mashiki has fairly cool graphic features to talk about. The game breaks down into two different versions graphically. There's a realistic graphics mode that essentially operates as a video game version of your favorite train set. You can watch trains pull into the station or hop on board the locomotive as they race across the world. This part of the game is just very pretty to look at. The developer uses this like semi camera focused blurry magic stuff to make everything just look very romantic. If you ever imagine in your head what it would be like to see the love of your life pull away from you at the train station, this is a game where you can experience that. Well, uh, kinda. Just like in your real life, there is no love of your life looking back at you. The trains in this game are just empty, like us. Oh, I'm sorry, it's not my fault. The other half of the game though, this is where the real game actually happens. Entering into an isometric build mode, this game's graphics are stripped down to a real planner mode. It's barren and it's precise, but it enjoys its own type of charm. While you won't have any satisfaction of seeing the brick and mortar or the steel of what you're building, you'll feel an entirely different kind of satisfaction as you see the rails you build laid out simply before you, and they are just sitting there boldly for you to enjoy. The two modes are seamlessly interchangeable, and it's a super nice touch from the developer to have both of these modes inside of the game. My childhood dreams can finally meet the cold realities of my adulthood, and they are just not embarrassed to see each other. It's, it's kind of nice. Let's move on to our next section, gameplay. I just got done with a pretty heavy run of playing Cuphead, and to say that frustration has just become an accepted part of life is, well, first, it, it's just letting too much of my real life slip into these game reviews, but secondly, it's becoming this weird, sadistic part of my gaming life that I just have increasingly come to love. I really started playing Mashinki as a simple game that I thought was just an indie dev dipping his toes into the tycoon world, and I was completely and absolutely off the mark. Mashinki goes deep. My first few failed tries at building a railroad monopoly just slowly creeped from the ideas I had of what I thought would work to just railroad networks that were complete messes and trains destroying each other or just sitting on the track staring at each other like little confused animals. As I began to see the depth that Mashinki held and how I could thoughtfully build rails that had interchanges and they worked together in harmony to deliver goods, I had this aha moment and it ignited that small part in your body that you just starts, you feel the addiction begin to creep in, you know? Building up resources, you soon start to build extensions onto your hubs. The train stations, the resource hubs, the manufacturing plants that you park your train at, these can all be extended to meet different needs. You can pick extensions that produce more manufactured goods, or you create a product for cash. It's your choice, and depending on the choices that you make, your empire starts to move slightly into different directions. It's very cool. Though I do have some problems with different parts of the gameplay. 
My first and maybe largest problem would have to be with the rail signal system. This might very well be the exact way that this system was developed and is used in real life, but my peanut brain just cannot figure it out. Rail lines that had been working for a long time all of a sudden had problems and trains started to collide with each other, just resulting in loss of resources and less importantly loss of life. I would have absolutely loved a better description of how to set up these rail signal systems. My head just needs help. I need my hand held in these kinds of situations and I cannot be left alone by a developer when it comes to something like this. Another big issue that really began to frustrate me was that I could not set what goods a station would have set. And stay with me on this explanation, it gets kind of wordy. If a station's range of capture includes a sawmill, then it would automatically pull timber from the sawmill and store it at the station until a train comes to pick it up. Seems cool, right? Except I don't want timber to go to a particular station. It's where I keep my snowflake passengers and they don't deserve to be standing around piles of dead trees. Also, my train that delivers that timber is not set up to go to the station, but half the goods being produced are ending up here, and I just, I'm confused. I'm sorry, I tried, but I couldn't figure out how to get this to stop. I would have simply loved to be able to decide what goods a station would accept so I could better dictate the flow of my resources. This seems like something that's so obvious to me, I looked for a long time on ways to fix my gripes with the games, and I don't think that they're in there. If they are and I miss them, I'm just a dummy. If not, they for sure need to be added into future versions. Alright, enough of that. Next up, sound. Sound is just actually a little bit underwhelming to me in this game. And let's start with sound effects because there's nothing overly bad about what's going on in this game in terms of sound effects. Most of the things feel how you think they would sound. And you don't really take notice. And that's actually a pretty good positive for sound design. Jans and Laney didn't have to do anything or create any sounds that we haven't heard before. You know what trains are supposed to sound like, you know what clanking steel sounds like, and everything just fits inside of the game. What really bugs me and what really does this game a disservice is the soundtrack. This game sounds like it was designed and created in the 1990s. And that is a big negative. The soundtrack had nothing to do with anything that was going on inside of the game. Progressing through the two different eras of locomotion available in this game, there is no music whatsoever that would indicate that you are within a different time period. The soundtrack for the game is just a generic, upbeat, bluesy track. It, it feels like it belongs in Mavis Beacon or something, just not this game. Let's move on. Story. I've touched on parts of the story in Machine Key throughout this review. You are running a business that's about building railroad and becoming a tycoon. The story is just about as deep as that. There are quests along the way that act as tutorials and guided missions to walk into the next era of locomotion. Here and there, there are quests that will have you decide what kind of transportation you want to focus on or cities asking to be connected to each other. It's nothing too deep or meaningful, but it doesn't really have to be. A more robust story would definitely add value to the game, but I'm just here for the trains. So let's move on to our next category, replayability. I'm a little bit embarrassed with how much I have not just been playing Machinki, but thinking about it. I was solidly reprimanded by my lady because while she was talking to me earlier today, instead of just being a good, engaged boyfriend, my mind just kept drifting to the sweet, sweet railroad layouts that I had built in Machinki. Ooh. And uh, I, more specifically, not just the rails that, that I had built, but how I could fix the clusterfuck of a system that I had built. The fact that this game is in early access and has so much depth to it, and that you only right now are playing in two eras of a planned uh, five or six, I think, it's simply fantastic. I really hope that Jan Zelaney can follow up on what he has made here already, because this game has so much replayability, it's unbelievable. A quick disclaimer in this section, for some, I have encountered a few crashes here and there in the game. There is an autosave feature, but it's not always foolproof, so if bugs in early access or something that stops you from replaying a game, maybe pump the brakes a little bit on this and wait to a future version of the game, but for right now, I find it enjoyable and playable. Mashinki Mashinki is a game that feels like it was made with a love and depth of the 1990s tycoon games, but it was updated with the ease of use and the graphics of a modern era. 
And while the game has a bug here or a crash there, overall, it's a very beautiful and well-made game that's just a ton of fun to play. So if you're looking to nerd out and just play a tycoon game, the Mashinki from Jan Zelani is definitely a buy for me. And I would recommend this game to anyone who enjoys anything build-like in gaming. Quick reminder before we take off, you can find a written version of this review and more text-based content over at our website, BackspaceNomads.com. For now, thanks for checking out the review, and we'll see you Monday for episode 35 of the podcast.